feel like I'm not gonna be a typical bride and that's probably what most brides say. I think I wanna commit to exercising every single day. I'm grateful for the love and support of my family, Evan, friends, and my cats, of course. <laughs> but I feel like these are, you know, defining moments of the past three months. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the April plan with me. I have been gone for a minute, both from this channel and from uh, New York City and my apartment. Some of my previous videos, I mentioned how I was going on vacation for two weeks, which is such a blessing. My partner is a medical resident and they get four weeks off per year in two week chunks. My supervisor at my job was nice in allowing me to take the full two weeks with him. We just had the best time. We went to St. Thomas for a week and then we went around Delaware. That's where we're both from. So we got to see both of our families and just hang out and relax. Oh, also I got engaged. <laughs> I was debating when to just casually throw that in there. Um, and that seemed like a good time. So I'm not sure how well that was picking up on camera. I'll post a picture later if that didn't turn out great. But yes, while we were there, we did get engaged and I won't go into too much details about it because you clicked on this to watch a plan with me. But given that weddings are big events that need to be planned, I figured it was worth bringing up here because over the next, you know, year, year and a half, we don't have any of the details figured out, which is why wedding planning might start to seep into these videos a little bit, just in terms of like planning for how I'm going to plan a wedding. I don't know. I really like I have no idea about anything but <laughs> about weddings in particular So I'm not sure what that's gonna look like. Maybe it'll be something I document on this channel. Maybe not I'm not really sure if that's something you're interested in uh, Please let me know. So that being said I was away for two weeks I, I think the last video I posted was a vlog I had intended on doing a little bit of vlogging on vacation and I genuinely just kind of forgot probably until like the last day or so. I was just having such a good time not working, not having to worry about things. And I'm sorry that there hasn't been a video for a minute, but I am back now. It is actually April 1st. I normally try to film my plan with me's before the first so I can post them on the first, but that just wasn't gonna work out this time around. So that being said, at the same time, it feels kind of nice to be planning on the first. It just feels like a full reset. Whereas in most plan with me videos, I'm filming like up to a week in advance. So I think my plan for this video, I'm realizing that we are a quarter of the way through the year, which is wild. The months have come and gone since January 1st, but if you were here for my January 2024 plan with me, I had mentioned that I want to start doing like quarterly reflections because there was a template I found on Notion, which is what I use for my plan with me's for that kind of thing. So I'm excited to be able to do that. So with that, I'm going to focus a little bit less on the things that I normally do in my plan with me's. So we'll very quickly go through like my goals from March and reflect on that. I've already created my goals for April, so that saves us some time, but I'll tell you what they are. We'll quickly do social media stuff and then we'll just clean up my dashboard like usual. So I think we'll quickly go through the usual things and then at the end we will do our little four months of 2024 reflection. So if you're curious to see what that looks like and how I'm doing that, then please stick around. All right, so this is my Notion dashboard. This is both the week of April 1st and it's a Monday. So this is what I would normally be doing anyways, updating my weekly to-do list. So this is for the week of April 1st through 5th and then the weekend to-do list will be April 6th and 7th. All right, I fully did not <laughs> water my plants as I wanted to, so I do still need to do that. I organized my TV stand. What else do I need to do this week? Edit plan with me. I need to plan my content. Make sourdough. Y'all, my sourdough journey, I don't know what's going on, but like something in the universe does not want me to make sourdough recently. I don't know. This is probably a rant for a different video, but one of my goals this year was to not perfect, but like really approve upon my sourdough making and techniques and all of a sudden we've taken like 10 steps back like I'm back to making a starter because I my other starter was not cutting it anymore that I've had for a year granted I didn't neglect her but I wasn't I don't know whatever it's a long story and now that's been a whole process and things aren't going according to plan so um I need to make sourdough and or just like keep working on my starter this week for sure I'm trying to think what I have going on this week I am working remotely this week I have you know a separate work to-do list with all of my work things I have a doctor's appointment on Thursday I don't know we're going 
to a Yankees game on Sunday, which is exciting. We've only ever gone to Mets games since moving to Brooklyn. So we're gonna try out a Yankees game, but I don't, there's nothing like I have to do for these things. But we should probably do financial stuff. I have that rewritten as a goal for this month and I should probably just do it this week. Stuff is very broad, but I know what it means. I, long story short, I opened up a high yield savings account. My partner, now fiance, is on it as well. So we just need to like figure out what that looks like and kind of like, our goals for saving together. That's all I have for now. I might come back to this weekly to-do list. Those are probably the biggest things that I need to do. In terms of the weekend, um, vacuum, I vacuumed this past weekend, so I don't need to do that again. Laundry, absolutely. Bake, yeah, I'm not sure when making sourdough is gonna happen. I'll just keep it on the week section. I would love to bake, obviously. Oh, I should clean our shower. We were without some cleaning products for a little bit, so our, our bathroom is screaming to be cleaned right now. I'm trying to think what else. I actually have to work on Saturday, so that kind of takes away some time, and then we have the Yankees game. So this is probably good. I don't want to accomplish too much on the weekend um, just because there won't be enough time. All right, scrolling down, we have a fresh habit tracker, fresh water intake tracker because I have this resetting automatically at like midnight, I think every single Monday. So again, excuse the fact that it's out of order. I have not set up the things to make it fall in order, but it doesn't bother me. We can go ahead and fill out what we have so far today for Monday. It's only 9.45, but I did wake up on time. I'm trying to commit to that so hard this week. I was being nice to myself last week, kind of getting back from vacation. Granted, during vacation, I don't think there's a single day that I slept in past 6.30, which is just wild, but it was good because then it made the days of vacation, especially while we were in St. Thomas, feel like they were going by so much more slowly in a good way. So anyway, I wanna start getting back into routine in all of the ways. So I did wake up on time today. Mindfulness stuff I have not done yet, but I've written in my to-do list to meditate. Um, I did read a little bit. I went for a run this morning. I probably won't be having alcohol today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cross that off and I'm sure I'll go to bed on time, but I'll get there when I kind of check in with this later tonight. In terms of water intake, I actually don't have my water with me. That's not great, but I have finished one of my like tumbler bottles and that's 22, or no, that one's 24 ounces. Oh, you probably see some things peeking down here and sometimes when I'm just like I need somewhere to brain dump I'll just start doing it below things on my dashboard because it's like organized but also out of the way so I started writing down some birthday ideas and then I've been trying to plan out a more specific morning routine because I'm definitely someone who the more specific I am when I set out small goals like that I'm more likely to do them I don't know if like just as a part of the reset like just Having the plan to like generally wake up on time every day, I'm gonna work out every day, I'm gonna read every day. I don't know, I feel like that's not cutting it, at least for this week. So for this week, I wanted to map out like certain time frames of like at this time I'm doing this thing. That way there's absolutely no question about it. But okay, moving on, let's go look at my monthly goals. Where are they? Right here. So I did already fill out April, but before we get to that, we can reflect on March together. Ideas for vacation. Vacation happened. We did brainstorm things that we wanted to do. We did all the things. I would love to talk about this more, but I really don't want it to take up time. Buying things, prep for vacation. I did this. Wow, feels like I wrote this so long ago now because these things like have gone and passed. And uh, financial planning. Yeah, I didn't really get to that. I'm actively contributing to this account, but I'm not having really planned for it. Read one book. I did finish a book. I did a lot of reading on vacation, especially the plane ride home. I'm a very anxious plane traveler. So reading just kept me very busy as well as plane switch. Journal three times. I'm just, I'm not even gonna check. I think I may have once, but definitely not three times. And again, I was on vacation. I think I probably said in my March plan with me that it's like a very chill month in terms of goals. Free film and edit videos. Already talked about that. That did not happen. Organizing new computer. I had anticipated that I'd be buying a new computer in the two weeks that I was gone. And I did try. I went to the Apple store and had the intention of buying one, but the computer I wanted to get because I wanna upgrade some of the features. You can't buy that in the store. So so then they're encouraging me to order it online, which is fine. I don't mind doing that, but I was hoping to buy the computer while I was in Delaware, so it would be tax-free because I don't want to pay tax on it. Um, so I'm waiting until I'm back in Delaware again, just because they're gonna have to, have to order it, they're gonna have to ship it. So I still need a new computer. I'm still using my work computer right now, unfortunately, to film this video. Buying new external hard drive is kind of pointless at this point. So yeah, it feels like I didn't accomplish much in March, but again, we didn't have a lot of goals because I knew it was gonna be a really flexible month. So for April, what I'm hoping to accomplish is reading one book. I think that's two months in a row now that I have 
been really on top of the reading, which is exciting. I'm reading, I don't have it with me right now, but I'm reading the fourth book in the American Royal series. And if you know anything about that series, you might be like, Sarah, I think that's a little past your age demographic. And maybe it is, I don't know. I started reading those books probably like a year or two ago and I enjoy them. I think this is the last book in the series, so I might as well finish it. But she is lengthy. I think she's like 350 pages. So this will be a challenge to get through one book this month, but I'm really hoping it will happen. Start looking at wedding venue. News. At this point, I'm not really sure what I'm doing when it comes to wedding planning. And it literally has been, it's been less than two weeks. It's been like a week and a half since he proposed. So people keep asking, I'm like, oh, like what details do you know? I'm like, am I supposed to know the details? Because I, I don't, we haven't, I mean, we've like very vaguely like thrown out ideas and I actually do have ideas for engagement photos. So, oh, I should add that to here. Yes, yeah, so I should look into doing that. I feel like I'm not gonna be a typical bride and that's probably what most brides say before turning into a typical bride, bridezilla. But no, I'm very relaxed. Evan and I in general are a very non-serious couple. And as much as I would love to go have like a cutesy little photo shoot in Central Park, that's just not our vibe. So I actually have ideas I don't want to get into it so you all will be surprised when you see it later. But I have ideas that is, they're going to be cute, but it's like our kind of cute. It's going to be a little funny. I think people will get a laugh. Anyway, one thing I also do know is that wedding venues are something that you should book well in advance. So we've committed to like figuring that out is like the very first thing. And hopefully before summer, we have something secured. So that's definitely on the horizon. I should probably start looking into that this month. Journal four times. Again, now that I'm trying to build out my routine, I'm in this like big reset, I feel like right now, I think I can do this. So whether that's four times in one week or once a week or two times in two different weeks, very flexible goal. So I'm hopeful I can get to that. Ooh, this next one is kind of exciting, I guess. I wanna plan a fun solo day in New York or do something different. And I know there's been a handful of Saturdays that I've vlogged where Evan is working and I go out like doing things, but it's all things that I've done before. Like I'm either going to a spin class or I'm taking you guys to Alta and Sephora and like doing shopping, but I love to do something different and film it and take you along for that journey which is in alignment with one of my 2024 goals, which is to get out and do more and enjoy the city for what it is. So stay tuned for whatever that will look like, cause I'm not sure yet. Okay, this next one, the influencers are influencing. I don't know what it is about 2024, but I've seen a lot of the, a lot of YouTubers that I watch have started crocheting and I've been a long time knitter. I haven't knit in a couple of years now probably, but I started knitting when I was like nine. That was a hobby that I had as a kid that I just randomly picked up. And I did try my hand at crocheting back when I was doing my Etsy online soap business. I wanted to try and make washcloths. So I did learn how to crochet, but I haven't done it in a while. And I really want to make a blanket, just something simple, something easy. I also see that as a like home apartment project because we've been trying to like, you know, upgrade the apartment in different ways. We have color schemes and ideas for each of our rooms. So we've been kind of looking at certain things like pillows and blankets. And I'm like, wait, I could just make some of these things. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I used to make pillows and would do sewing projects as a kid too. Maybe I make us some pillows. New idea unlocked. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what I come up with. But yeah, I love to start a crochet project and whether that is a blanket right now or just something small to get back into the hang of doing it. I would love to do that, which also may be directly related to a 2024 goal. I'm suddenly remembering all my yearly goals. I think I had on there, uh, start a new hobby. Maybe this is it. And as you all saw, I'm gonna start planning my birthday. I'm turning 30 on May 11th and that falls on a Saturday. As of right now, I have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off of work. And I might end up getting Monday and Tuesday off because of working overtime the week before that. So I might have a whole week of things to plan. So I wanna start looking into that. And then like I said, financial planning for that savings account. All right, while we're in monthly planning mode, I do wanna go into my movement section, which I think I introduced this calendar last month and we can go over to last month. I don't, yeah. <laughs> was not very ambitious during March and the things that I did want to do, I barely did. But it just, it's okay. It's okay. These things happen. So for the month of April, I have thoughts. So on reflecting of the past couple of months, and honestly the past, well, <laughs> 30 years, I realized that it has been more and more challenging for me to keep a consistent routine with movement and physical activity. And I think I need to just change it up a little bit. If you don't know, I'm a health and wellness coach. So I am helping folks revamp, revisit, replan their workout schedules and routines all the time. And when it's a big challenge for them, I have them reflect on, you know, what that challenge is and how we can identify new strategies and solutions. And I don't think I've been doing that with myself as much as I should be. Normally it's just more 
more of like a reset of like, okay, like I planned as best as I could and I told myself I was gonna go to the 7 a.m. spin class, but then my alarm didn't go off and I didn't do anything to make up for it. And you know, we're just gonna replan and revisit this again next week. So as great as that is, I think I do wanna try something new. And historically, I feel like I have been the kind of person to not talk badly about it, but whenever I see people do like 30 day challenges, whether it be for physical activity or eating or whatever it is, I'm always skeptical of it just because in the world of behavior change, we're looking to establish like sustainable long-term goals that kind of just eventually become and feel like habits. There is ongoing beeping outside my window. So if you hear that, I'm so sorry. So whenever I think about 30 day challenges, that doesn't really fit within my view of behavior change and creating that type of sustainable like energy. However, I feel like I'm now wanting to try this out a little bit more. And yes, of course, past 30 days, I wanna to continue to exercise. I haven't even told you guys what I wanna do yet. So I think for April, since there are 30 days, works out perfectly. Today's the first of the month. I've already went for a run. I think I wanna to commit to exercising or daily movement as I like to call it every single day and although this seems extreme and is like the opposite of what I've been doing for the past couple months where like I've been content with like three to four days of some sort of intentional movement I think knowing that there is like an end cap to it makes it feel more rewarding to get there and push myself to be like, oh, like how many times can I actually work out in 30 days versus like how many times can I work out over the course of my lifetime if that makes sense and I'm hoping that it almost is like a trick on my brain, right? Of like in working out every single day for 30 days. I'm doing it knowing that I wanna reach that 30 day mark and accomplish that, but kind of within that, my body is getting so used to just being active every single day that it then becomes a habit. I know it takes longer than 30 days to create a habit. I'm doing it enough within 30 days that in the weeks to follow in May, you know, I won't be working out every single day, but I will feel 30 days is long enough time for me to really feel the effects of being active, just kind of mentally that I'll want to more naturally do it a couple times throughout the week, if that makes sense. I don't know if that is making sense, but that's kind of what I'm hoping. I did recently watch some of Morgan Adams' videos where I know she's been on like a weight loss journey for a really long time and that's not necessarily what I'm on, though, I don't know, I don't want to get into the whole weight aspect of things, but she's done 30 day challenges in the past and then I see her kind of keeping up with those things now. So I don't know, I'm feeling motivated. I'm influenced by the influencers again, I guess you can say. I think what I want to do, I'll pause the camera for now. I want to plan out the next 30 days because I have my schedule at both jobs for the month. The only exceptions to the 30 day rule, I think will be on the day that I am working both jobs because it's just not realistic. I mean, anything is possible, right? Like I could probably fit in a workout, but on the days that I am working both jobs, I am moving way more anyway. So I feel okay with that. And for the most part, I think I wanna focus on either running or taking a spin class, but then having exceptions. There's a spin class that, there's spin classes every single day. But depending on the instructor, depending on the theme, I may not wanna take them. It might be like this week, for instance, it's supposed to be raining pretty much nonstop. If it's like a light rain, I don't mind going for a run, but if it's like heavy downpours, I don't wanna go for a run. So then an indoor, just like body weight workout would have to do. But I do think I'm gonna focus on the cardio aspect of it, just so I'm not like trying to do too many things at once. Okay, so that took a minute, but I did fill out the entire month. I was able actually to look at the spin schedule ahead of time and they have all the themes for the month. So that worked out really nicely. Something I did forget to mention is that obviously I have these rest days worked in. Those are days that I am working at both jobs. Where I've placed run is kind of a loose, like my first intention is to run. If it is raining heavily or something happens and I do an indoor weighted workout, that's also fine. These are also days where I'd consider if I wake up and I am truly just not feeling a more intensive workout, go in for like a 30 minute walk, but also do. So I don't want people to think that like, I'm not taking any legitimate rest days outside of these like three days, three or four days I'm working at both jobs. There will definitely be some days where it's like, I don't wanna run, I don't wanna spin, I don't wanna work out. I just wanna like put headphones on and walk and kind of zone out for a bit. But I didn't feel like writing all of that. So I'd say I feel mostly confident about this. A lot of it really is just like weather depending, I suppose, you know, there might be times where I change my mind about a spin class and say, like, okay, I really don't feel like traveling. That's like the biggest part of spin classes. I would go way more often, but like I have to get on the subway to get there. I can't just like walk around the corner, unfortunately. So there might be days where like, I'm not feeling the spin class, but I am willing to go for a run. And you know, it's more so about the consistency than exactly what it is that I'm doing. I can go ahead and mark complete on Monday. So that's nice. I seem to make a habit of returning to this page every single day and I think seeing those consistent blue check marks um, will feel really good and I'll make sure I like update what I did each time that way when it comes to the May plan with me and we're reflecting on this I can tell you exactly what I did yeah I just wanted to share that this is what I'm trying out since 
if you all have been here for my plan with me's over the past few months, you've probably noticed a trend of me setting intentions to be more active and then I'm just simply not. All right, so very, very quickly, we're gonna go into my growth tracking for social media. And despite the fact that I only posted what, I guess, one, maybe two videos in March. I did hit my subscriber goal. I'm actually at 2,930 right now, which is an increase of 65. So I, I really can't complain there. My watch time hours for the past 365 days are 1,288. And lifetime views, I'm at 247,500. And 50. So my goal for April will be 3,000 subscribers. That would be very fun. If I hit that this month, we will see. So I did actually preemptively write out some social media goals for March. We're not gonna take the time to go to the page because it's only a couple. I wrote 3,000 goals. I wrote planning out content and like consistency with videos. And I also wrote down I know, I can't believe it either. Getting back into Instagram and TikTok. I posted a TikTok for the first time in a while. Last week or the week before, I was making tiramisu and I don't know, it felt really good to get back into the swing of things. So I'd like to post, I think at least weekly on both of those platforms. I'm pretty sure that's the goal that I created. Cause I think in that moment, it just felt fun again. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to feel fun and not like pressured. And that's something with like YouTube, I don't, I mean sometimes, but like, I more frequently have way more fun with this. Whereas I think I got into a habit with Instagram and TikTok that it just felt like it may have been like taking away from other things. Whereas right now I feel like it's adding value of some sort to like my well being. I don't know, we will see. But with that, it's also been a pretty long time since I've consistently posted on either of those platforms. And I even went into like the TikTok editor and things have changed. So I wanna do some like research on algorithms and platforms, best strategies for posting and editing um, content for both TikTok and Instagram. Okay, so finally we are getting into my reflection, which is housed in my 2024 goal section, I believe. Curious, you can go back and watch the January 2024 video where I created all of my annual goals. And then down here, I have the quarterly reflections. So January through March is the first time we'll be doing this. What I have, again, this is fully, I guess, borrowed from another creator. Every single plan with me, I link below all the folks who I took inspiration from or I'm using their templates. So this is a template um, from someone else. So we can add four images from, I guess it'll be one per month. That's going to be challenging, but I will, I will certainly find four. And then some reflective questions to answer. I guess we'll start with the photos. So, okay, let me quickly take a moment to go through my photos. Okay, so this is actually incredibly hard to do. First of all, choosing, well, technically I chose two vacation photos, but narrowing down all the photos, so difficult. And then just four photos in general to sum up three months. I feel like just so much has happened and they're all photos of me and or Evan, but there's so many photos of the cats. There's so many photos of things that I baked of the snow in New York City. But I feel like these are, you know, defining moments of the past three months that I want to be represented here. First one, I love this photo. This was on New Year's Eve, probably before the ball dropped. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but that was, you know, our very first moment of, or close to our very first moment of the new year. Next one, you all have seen this picture or a version of this picture for when I made Evan a cat cake of our cat Mindy for his birthday, which I just love so much. That was such a silly thing to do, but we both really enjoyed it. And then the next photo is from vacation. This was actually the day that I thought he was going to propose. <laughs> we were watching the sunset on this little like tiny peninsula near our condo. Regardless, it was still a great night, but the last photo uh, is actually the day that he did propose. He waited until we were back in Delaware so this is in Rehoboth Beach under a little gazebo type of thing. My mom has the full like video and photos of the moment. She actually hasn't sent them to me yet. So this is honestly probably a better photo. Sorry, mother. Kind of right after. So I needed obviously to include that here. So then for the reflections, the questions are, what was I grateful for? What was I proud of? What do I wish I did more of? And what do I wish I did less of? Reading these questions out loud now, I'm realizing this might take me a second. So I think I will pause again to fill this out and then we will reconnect when I'm done. All right, so I didn't feel like syncing up my camera with my screen recording again. And just to share, which Honestly, doing this I think was really, really helpful because I was kind of not fully surprised, but by some of the things that I wrote down was just like, yeah, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Like kind of getting all those thoughts out of my head and onto something more tangible that I can, I'm forced to put it into more specific language and I'm reading it, I'm reading those words, they're resonating a lot heavier. So 
What I was grateful for, I said these past three months, I think I'm most grateful for having a sense of security in every aspect of my life, family, relationship, career, financial. I feel like I've waited so long to get to this point in my life. And now that I'm here and don't have security related stressors that I once did, it can be easy to overlook them. Um, or it'd be easy to overlook since I'm not forced to constantly think about them. I'm grateful for the love and support of my family, Evan, friends, and my cats, of course, <laughs> who allow me to feel safe and secure even in moments when I may not be. I think this is the one, honestly, this is one that I'm reading back and I'm just like, damn, that is something that I feel like I've overlooked a little bit. So having this moment of expressing gratitude for it feels really like fulfilling and warm and rewarding. I don't think I've talked about this on this channel, probably since I was like filming in grad school, but as someone who kind of got a late start to their career, like I said, I'm turning 30 soon. I just in January reached my one year mark at my first full-time job. It took a long time to get through school and figure out what it is that I wanna do, which I'm still figuring out. But regardless, I'm at a place in my life where I'm in a stable relationship. I mean, I have been, Evan and I have been together for over 12 years. But of course with that, there's been ups and downs. And that's not just because we're engaged. Like I, I very much have felt that with him for a while now. My family has also been there through it all. There's nothing really security issues related there, more so just the fact that they are there to support me like emotionally and financially whenever I've needed. Career and financial are obviously intertwined. You know, I'm at a place now, when I first moved to New York City, I was so broke. I was not in a lot of debt. I'm very grateful that I'm in the position I am in financially, but I did have some debt and it was stressful just to pay bills. Very big life change going from living in Delaware and affording that lifestyle to a lifestyle in New York City are two very different things. And I'm at a place now where not only am I paying bills on time and paying off debt that I do have, I have the ability to do that while also saving and also putting things into a retirement fund, which again, I've always been hard on myself for doing those types of things so much later in life than most people. I should give myself more grace in those moments. So I don't know, that's what I'm feeling grateful for. I feel like I've been really feeling that for the past three months of just that sense of security in like most areas of my life. So for what I was most proud of, again, I didn't think this is what I would be writing, but I said I'm most proud of my growth. I'm proud of my growth and my journey with having anxiety. I can't speak to what exactly has changed. Perhaps it's the security I feel, or maybe it's a greater sense of confidence in myself or improved resiliency and coping mechanisms. I've definitely felt less anxious over the past few months and that is something that feels worth recognizing. Late 2023, I was secretly hoping at some point my therapist may recommend looking into medication because I didn't think that there was any other way out. But in the next three months, I look forward to exploring more about what has helped ease my anxiety so I can continue to go down this path. So this is really interesting and I genuinely, like when I'm thinking about the last three months, I have not, my job is like the biggest source of my anxiety as well as I will say not to like turn this negative the one thing that has given me more anxiety recently is like more existential related stuff of just like constantly thinking about like how much time we have left and wanting to accomplish my goals and being older and whatever that I need to like get that kind of negative language out of my head but my work anxiety especially has reduced significantly I can think about a couple of reasons why that may have changed but overall I don't know I feel like I can't really speak to it too much but I do want to make sure that it continues to stay this way. So as I mentioned, I'm going to kind of continue exploring what that is. Because as we know with my routine and stuff, like coping mechanisms, great, but everything's been so up and down in terms of like exercise and journaling and reading. So, you know, I'm, maybe it is a security aspect of it. Next one, what do I wish I did more of? I wish I saw and called my family and friends more often. Being away from the people I love most is difficult, but I'm learning that it's also difficult to learn how to best put in the effort to maintain communication. I intend to be better about this in the next three months. This is something that I've like always hard on myself about, but I think it's also important to understand that this is like a new skill that I'm learning, as silly as that sounds, and I'm not trying to make excuses. And I do talk to my my family pretty frequently. I would love to talk, I would love to talk to them more frequently. I have some friends in particular that I need to be better about reaching out to, but maintaining like regular communication at a distance is not something that I've had to navigate before outside of the times that I was long distance with Evan, which is a little bit different because like there's that expectation of regular conversations as the person you're in a relationship with, but exploring that with family and friends is something that is new to me. So taking the time to learn what that looks like and how I put in that effort, you know, I think there's room for growth there, but I also need to be nicer to myself because 
I'm learning this for the first time. Last but not least, what do I wish I did less of? I wish I did less sitting around. Downtime is great, but I think I'd be lying if I said I took a full advantage of my free days or free time. I think I'm getting better about this, but I want to continue being more intentional with my time, especially on the weekends and in the morning before work. There are so many great things to do and see, and I no longer want to take that for granted or let the time slip away. So you can probably see where my like existential anxiety is speaking a little bit in uh, those sentences, but I mean, it really is true. And I am getting better at it. I'm seeing myself getting better about it, but there's been in mornings especially I think that's where I've been like faltering a little bit as I've spoken to a bit in this video already just taking more advantage of the mornings as relaxing and as great it is to sit down and like catch up on my favorite YouTube videos like I do not need to be doing that for two hours a day every single day I can do that in the evening I can do that on a lunch break I can do that while getting ready but there are other things that I could be doing in the morning weekends are a little more flexible like of course like yesterday Evan and I quite literally more so him than me but like for a long time we didn't leave the bed and like that's just okay you're gonna have days like that right but yeah just getting out and doing more or either by myself or together is what I want to focus on for the next three months. So with that, I feel like in a way, the last two questions have things ending. I don't want to say like on a negative note, I think it's important to reflect on them and like see room for improvement, but maybe for the next cycle of this in three months, I will add something else about just like more concretely writing out my intentions for the next three months. I, I did a little bit of that within these responses, but I don't know, it might be nicer to end on a slightly more positive thinking note. But that is it, my friends. I think that will conclude the plan with me. This is actually really enjoyable. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I'm happy that I've begun incorporating these new things into my planning. Something to look forward to. It breaks up the monotony of plan with me is a little bit because I do feel like they are a little bit redundant. So every couple months having something different to throw in there. I think is exciting. So if you have not done so, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe. I would love to have you here. On top of plan with me's, I do bake with me's, I do New York City vlogs, I do what I eat in a day's. That will probably be the next video that comes out after this. Yeah, I would love to have you in this little teeny tiny community that I am cultivating. But otherwise, thank you for being here today and I will see you next time.